Donald Trump's four-year tenure at the White House was defined by the norms he broke. Governing by tweet, refusing to fully separate himself from the businesses he owned, embracing authoritarian leaders abroad while insulting American allies, proudly undermining intelligence agencies, loudly speculating about election legitimacy, the list goes on. But now, post-presidency, the blistering 49-page federal indictment of Trump has ushered the nation, its politics, and its people into uncharted territory. Joining me now, presidential historian John Meacham, Pulitzer Prize-winning author of And There Was Light. John, thank you very much for coming back to The Sunday Show. The, the federal charges being brought against Donald Trump are uncharted territory. What do you make of this perilous mo moment, not only for the former president, but for the country? I think it's a test of our maturity as a democracy. And you could argue, some of the founders would have argued that a mature democracy was an oxymoron. What we've got to try to do is prove that, that that's not the case. This is about us. Uh, it's about every citizen and our capacity to look at a set of facts that might be lean against, uh, and not only lean against, but be very much against, someone that we may like or we may think that they're standing i mean president trump former president trump is clearly casting himself as this hero of the persecuted uh which is a key part of a of a long-term right-wing narrative we have to be able to look at those facts and say that reason has to be able to govern passion that's that's the whole thing here and it, maybe it sounds grandiose, but it's what was going on at the Constitutional Convention. It's what goes on uh, when countries figure out a way to have a rule of law as opposed to the rule of a single person or a single party. And so I think this is what this is up to us uh, to say, you know what, uh, these were post-presidential uh, acts. Uh, these are very serious documents, apparently. Uh, this isn't a, taking a box by mistake. This is about the national security of the United States of America, the lives of our soldiers, the lives presumably of civilians. And so let's find out what he did and make a ju judgment about whether that's the kind of person you want in public life in a position of authority. Mm -hmm. It's not that big an ask. It's really not. But in a polarized era, there are too many people who make up their minds before they encounter the fact. And that's the test. And, and, to, and to that point, I want to pick up on that and also what you said a moment ago about this being uh, rule of law versus rule of a single person. You know, Speaker McCarthy promised to, quote, hold this brazen weaponization of power accountable. Um, and, and also his rival, 2024 rival, Ron DeSantis, Governor DeSantis of Florida, called the special counsel's investigation, quote, a mortal threat to a free society. Um, yeah. How, how does that fit into what you were just talking about? And what does that say about the modern day Republican Party that it is willing to go to those lengths to support someone who stands accused of very serious wrongdoing? What it says about the Republican Party, or at least a significant portion of it, is that it's not being a responsible constitutional participant. Uh, I was not s disappointed, but not surprised. Is that is that a coffee mug we have now? <laughs> uh, about uh, about that initial wave of reactions, uh, because it absolutely undercuts what I just articulated from my opinion of, of what the test has to be. So instead of finding out what was in the indictment, instead of seeing how the process moved forward, what did the Speaker of the House do? He said that it was Joe Biden's fault. Uh, he went to this, the weaponization language, thereby prejudging the case and not allowing the country to have the oxygen to deal with something on its own merits, on its own facts. Instead, it's, a, it's an episode, once again, in this ongoing reality show that Trump has programmed and in which all of us, willingly or not, are characters. 
And so that that was disappointing. Uh, look, the rule of law, that's the whole thing. Uh, we, you were talking about Nixon a minute, a minute ago. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a significant question here. Uh, uh, about whether President Ford uh, on that Sunday morning in September uh, in 1974 should in fact have pardoned right. President Nixon. Uh, did it create the sense that, that the pre- a president was above the law? So it was very unpopular in real time. About 25 years later, there was a revision of that. President Ford was honored. He went to his grave uh, as an honored uh, statesman of the Republic for that act. Uh, and now there's some re-revision, uh, as we say in my dorky uh, zip code. Uh, interesting question, right? Uh, can a can a president always escape uh, accountability? Here's the difference. What is in that indictment that in, in Miami, not by, let's be clear, not by a Justice Department, not by a partisan entity, but by a grand jury, an idea that goes back to common law, goes back a thousand years. They said this was worth pursuing. And everything that happened, happened after he was president of the United States. Now, I know in his own mind he's still president, but we don't live there. He's the only person who lives there. And I think that's another test of maturity here. See, this is why I wish I still had a, a second hour because I could just keep you. You could just, you could just sermonize. No, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> John Meacham, you don't uh, want to, you don't want to inflict your, that on your viewers, Jonathan. Come on. <laughs> well, I am grateful for the six and a half minutes that that you gave us today, John Meacham, Pulitzer Prize winning historian at MSNBC, and I thank you both. Thank you both. Thank you, as always, for coming to the Sunday Show.